Today is September 14th, 2012. My name is Tanya Fincham along with Juliana Nicolation. We're with the Oklahoma State University Library and we're conducting an oral history project called Centennial Farm Families. So thank you for having us today. And today we're in Kingfisher County, Kingfisher, the town of Kingfisher, speaking with James Gilmore and Gladys Hopkins in regards to the W.A. Cross Farm and the James Gilmore Farm. Okay, well, let's start with uh, having you, James, tell us what, how your family, how the Cross family came, came, oh, came mm -hmm. to well, Fisher okay. County. Well, okay. Granddad Cross made the, made the run in 1892. That's when they got this farm. And, uh, and where had they come from? Well, they came from Iowa. Came from Iowa. Yeah, they came from Iowa here. 1892, I guess. But he didn't turn. get a farm, and he paid ten dollars for the one that he homesteaded. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any idea how he chose that particular piece? Well, I don't know whether they had any choice or not, really, back then when they lined up and I guess made the run. I guess they, they staked it the way I got it. You know. So the state down there's probably so many farms that was open to the people to make the run. And I guess they made the run. And when they found this area, they put their stake in the ground, and I guess they claimed that 160 acres, you know. That's, that's the only way they could get it, I guess. Had he traveled here by himself or brought his family with him? Well, I don't know when it actually whole family came down or not. Later. Later, I think. I don't know whether he came by himself when he knew this land was opened up for, you know, for the people to come and make their run on it. It was a certain area, I guess. I don't know. I understand they lined up out here west of Kingfisher, and I guess they had a horse or something. I don't know how they actually made their travel to where the farmer was, you know. Oh. Was he married already at that time? Yes. Yeah, I think yes. so. Yeah, I think so. I don't know what had. Probably about uh, half of the children. Yeah, I think <laughs> it was somebody. Well, they, well, there was about some, three of the boys died here after they came here. Because there's a cemetery east of Lowell out there where our grandparents were. They were buried in, what, the two or three boys? Three had diphtheria. Yeah, they're buried there. Two, two died from diphtheria. Mm -hmm. So how many children were there? Well, there's four. Five. And those two have been seven. Been about seven kids in the family, I guess, yeah. And what was their primary crop or product that they farmed? Yeah, yeah that was... Wheat, wheat basically, as far as I know, that's all they ever farmed is wheat and farm out there. They had this one they homesteaded here, and then they had one farm across the road west of it. That's all they ever farmed, as far as I know. Yeah. Did they have to hire outside help? And I don't think they did because they had enough boys, you know, to help do that do a lot of farming there, you know, and I don't think they ever hired any outside help. Well, and did they have any outside income? Did they do jobs off the farm? Well, no, I'm not there. Nobody ever said anything if they did. Brother, brothers, they, they farmed a little around there. One uncle had a quarter, in fact, that's still in the family. It'd be the southeast quarter from where this quarter is. But uh, I think he was the only one that actually farmed. His name was Jim Cross. And the other brothers, they went and did other things. They didn't farm. Really. Well, Fred tried to uh, down in Altona community. I guess, yeah. And he had sweet potatoes, big crop, and got them on a train to head to Chicago or somewhere, and they froze. And that wiped him out. So he went to greener pastures in Washington State. Yeah, he moved to Washington. That was Fred Cross. He moved to Washington State and bought a little farm up there. I think they milked cows and 
and farmed a little up there in Washington State, north of Seattle there, about, I don't know, it was only what, 25 miles from the Canadian border, something yes. like that, real close. Canada up there, they farmed up there. Quite an adventurer to go yeah. that far. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, take us through how it came to be in your hands then. Take us through as it passed from... Well, <laughs> well, my mother, I don't remember just how she wound up with this. Well, they split, as you said, there was another uh, 160 acres there. Yeah, across and the so road. They, uh, divided it among the siblings, and she got 80 acres. Yeah, she got 80 of this. Yeah, this 160, she original farm. inherited the 80 acres. Yeah, and then her brother, one of the other brothers had the west 80 of that. Then they, oh, let's see. We went down to you and I and her brother, I guess, the 80, and then I bought out the sister and brother on the uh, 80s. One uncle that had the west side of this home, a steady place, he sold it to a neighbor south of us for quite a while and then it wound up, they sold it off to another boy. <laughs> and then, then he had, Gave up farming and wanted nobody to buy that, so I got to buy the west eighty of this home back. Mm -hmm. Back, so we got it back from the family. <laughs> so, and then the quarter across the road there that went down to my uncle there. It had the southeast quarter, and then it wound up passing it on down to his kids, and they still be my cousins, cousins still have a, the west quarter there, they still own across the road, they, they still own that. It's back in the Gilmore, our, our two cousins, one on the Gilmore side and one on the cross side, they weren't related, but they wind up getting married, so it's, it's, it's in the, the Gilmore family yet. Places out there with my Uncle Jim Cross. I went back to his daughter and on one side and Gilmer on the other side. So it, it, it's still no more Gilmer Farm, really. So the cross is currently 160 acres? Yeah. A total of 160. But under the name of Gilmer. Gilmer. Because he bought us right. out. Okay. Yeah, I bought that to my brother and sisters interested in that. And then like I said, the West Day of this homestead place there, it finally got back to where I finally got to buy the 80 and got it back into the family. <laughs> so Well in the on the cross farm is the house the house is still no, the house has been moved. Right. Yeah, there, that there's one. no buildings there. Do you have memories of it, of spending time in that yeah. house? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Can mm -hmm. you describe it a little bit to us? Well. It tells right here. Probably. <laughs> it was a, uh, it was built in 1892 after the family arrived from Iowa. It had two rooms upstairs and two rooms downstairs. And then the family increased to include seven children. A larger home was built across the driveway by Ora Bishop in 01, which would be this one. Yeah, that'd be that house there. There was one, there was a driveway here and the original house was over here. I don't have any recollection of the original one, but this one would be. Yeah. How was it heated? Do you remember? <laughs> it was wood so it was, you know, it was gas or nothing every day out there. It's got had a wood stove heat it If there was two bedrooms did all the children sleep in one or how yeah. I'm sure there was two to a bed maybe three on cold nights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I imagine that would be but I doubt the bedroom is hard to heat it, I don't suppose I think so. <laughs> Your 
father was raised in that house. No, in, in, the, the, in the newer one. In the Gilmore okay. house. It was all mother, but this belongs to the mother's okay. side. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Here's the date when that house was moved to town in 45, she says. Yeah, is that when they moved mm -hmm. the old house in the town there in 1945? I couldn't remember what year they moved that thing to town, but that, that was, I think, was about the last building on the place. Old barns and stuff that had been there so long, they pretty much dilapidated. <laughs> They got burned or cleaned up anyway. There wasn't any. Well, do you remember when electricity came to that farm? No, I sure don't. I don't know where they. <laughs> not sure it's even got it now, does it? <laughs> well, they don't have nothing yeah. out there. There's no electricity there. But since you've had cattle and stuff. No, they would. I don't think there's. I don't any. think it was ever. Maybe in the late. Well, they didn't get a REA came into this country out here in about 1937 or 8 and I suppose they had got electricity then for a few years because I'm like I say my now, don't cousin, they all live there, do my, yeah, yeah my <laughs> cousin she lived and her husband lived there for a while you know I think they had electricity when they lived there in the late 30s or early 40s I don't know when Bill Dorothy got married there. It's been about 1940, wasn't it, around there? Yeah, yeah somewhere in that right neighborhood. Uh, they, 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 they lived in this house for a while. I don't yeah, think they might have even farmed it. I guess Bill did. Do you remember visiting yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, I can remember going on when I was a kid. I'd say when the cousin first got married, I remember staying all the night there a time or two. I was probably... 10 or 12, maybe so. Have indoor plumbing at that time? No, 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 oh, no. They had outhouses out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was an old cellar right kind of off the edge of the house, somewhere there. That you can still see the kind of the hole in the ground where that was. And then there was a dug well there. That's where they got the water. They were, it's still partly there yet. I covered it up there. I farmed it then for up till I retired there. Got a neighbor that lives right south and has a quarter south of it. He, I, he farms a, only about 37 acres of farmland on the whole farm. This says family members dug a 67 foot well by hand, only to discover the water was very hard. Mm -hmm. Although it was much appreciated, a heavy supply of homemade lye soap was required for the laundry. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, out in that hard land out there, <coughs> real red clay stuff, and I mean, water was hard to come by out there anywhere. So, well, would you go out for holidays like Christmas and Thanksgiving to, to this particular house? Uh, yeah, I don't ever remember no. much going out there. They always came to our house, I think, yeah. all of my, my, See, our folks. House. My grandmother died when I was an infant. She died in 1936, so I never knew her at all. Yeah. Now the grandfather then came and lived with the Gilmore family. Yeah, he... For a short moment. Yeah, out here in our house there, he came and stayed with our folks there the last two or three years. Or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's about, that's probably about 1945, when it? Yeah, when that's about the time when they sold that house out there in the mm -hmm. country and the fellow moved it to Kingfisher. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the end of that, the end of that deal. Well, on, on the Cross Farm, has there been any conservation efforts like Harrison and that? that yeah, yeah, that what farm ground there have got two or three terraces on that. Yeah, we had a terrace there. Yeah, it was. Back to drilling an oil well on out in the farm ground there, we did abandon it finally. We got one oil well on the east E, I call it. Still there, one well there. It's in pasture land. Yeah, but it's all pasture for that well was. There's two ponds out there. There's one I don't know, they built that I don't know, was it saying anything when they built that uh, one? It's some I don't know, there was some fellows here from Cambridge. Dr. Pendleton. Doctor and two or three 
these fellows here in Cambridge, they talked her granddad in and letting them build a big pond out there, honey, they duck hunted and everything else out there. In fact, the, the old pond, I guess it was real deep at one time. Our brother, neighbor friend of his, they went out there, they, they caught some fish that weighed 45 pounds catfish. <laughs> but it kind of settled in from where it got so shallow and go dry. So my dad, he, he built another pond behind it and it's, it stayed water all the time. This original pond, they went dry this summer. They went dry. Yeah, a lot of things went dry this summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there a lot of them went dry too. It got down to where it was probably over about, about a foot deep when it was clear full, you know. So it didn't take long for it to dry up. There wasn't any water running. Yeah, it, there was a little water in it here a month or so ago. There it ran. I put a little, a little bit in that. So what's currently going on with that particular farm? Well, like I say, I ran it to the neighbor south of me. He runs cattle on the, on the pastures. Off. He farmed the wheat around there. Had it wheat the last few years. There. Other than that, it's, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, it's, like I say, that's real hard old clay soil out in there that it doesn't rain this summer the pasture's about to cover these walls. <laughs> yeah, there was a green spear on it. Now they, we've had a sheet showers here in back in August and there and it's uh, I, I drive out there every week or two just to look around and it's uh, it greened up a little bit and the grass was about that tall though. Like I hope it moved these cows off of it because it got so short that there just wasn't nothing there to eat, you know. But it's kind of greened up here a little bit this fall. So your mother grew up there? Yeah. So yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And did, was there a school in the in the community there where she lived? Yeah. Well? yeah. Our granddad helped build one. And mm -hmm. let's see that. And yeah, it was the place there was the house there had been a mile east and a mile south of school. That's where the, our brother and brothers all went to school there. In fact, our mother, she got her teacher certificate. She taught school there about six years. And then they, they moved that schoolhouse. It's up here in town at the, at the museum. museum now. They call it the Gantt School Gant because school. it was built on Gantt family. family. Property. And some of that family did reside in Stillwater, and I don't know when our mother passed away in '89. I think we got some correspondence, but they would be getting older, so I don't know if they're still in existence or not. Trying to see what she said about the school. That granddad helping. Me. Yeah, I saw it later on. I found the she talked about how she and her sister had to walk this, you know, mile and a half on the diagonal, probably. And then her brother cut the fences so they could get through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it had been from their house out there. It had been diagonally across that section. And then you came out just right where that schoolhouse was. You went by the road, you'd have to walk two miles to get to school. <laughs> And then it was real cold one winter, and they're at the school. Their supply of coal used to fuel the stove, and heat the schoolhouse began to run low. And Mrs. Gilmore said, we were getting upset, and suddenly the students could see somebody riding one horse and leading another. To the delight of Mrs. Gilmore and her sister, the man turned out to be their brother, James Cross, who was still living at their home and uh, he had come to take them home. This is when they were students. <laughs> but I'm still trying to see where. Yeah, I don't know that. Yeah. I know she wrote on there where he went on and served on. Okay, my father, W.A. Cross, helped build the first Gantt schoolhouse after he came to Oklahoma. No, I'm going to say the year. Hmm. Uh, 
She kept pretty good records, but not when you're trying to establish a timeline. There. At least there's something. Well, yeah. you know, it's it's good, and I've got boxes and notebooks and stuff. But when she lived with us her last uh, six or seven years of her life, and she was basically in good health, but she would get an idea in her head as before we really thought about recording things, and. Uh, that was from 83 to 89, and uh, she would jot down things about family members, which, you know, is a help if you want to go back and read through all of it. <laughs> and toward the end of her life, I began to know that her lifespan was about over, because she was 88 when she passed away. And I got a 8-track uh, out and was recording, and she wouldn't talk. <laughs> I don't know if she got the idea of why I had it out or what, but she was very talkative until I'd get the microphone out and then she might say three words. I didn't get much of this recording, which is, is sad, but yet we do have a lot of it, Dr. Andy, like I said, we just had the time to get it all. In chronological order. <laughs> well, do you do you have any personal memories from the, the cross farm that you want to From share? that particular farm, I really don't, other than about the lake. One year, of course, I was still at the Gilmore farm, and we had relatives from the Iowa place that came, and we had very cold weather. And we went ice skating on the cross lake. Yeah, I remember going out to escape. I've got pictures yeah, of that. we did have a few pictures of that. Our dad and brother and their sister all had ice skates that clamped onto your shoes. And my dad built metal uh, supports to go up, you know, mid-ankle yeah, high or a little more. strap would go up about that high above your ankle so if you wouldn't wouldn't tilt over so much. <laughs> and that's the skates we used was the ones they had used. <laughs> and I still have a pair or two of them, I think, because I, I hang on to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I skate there. Yeah. So we, we ice skated a lot on the Gilmore Farm pond because it seemed like when we were children, we had a lot of snow and, and ice yeah, cold like weather. We had a lot of cold weather. I know that ice would get six, eight inches deep on yeah. the pond. Very safe to be yeah. on. In fact, I don't know whether there's any picture of that or not. I don't remember the folks over there at the Cross Lake drove a car out of them there one time. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. I know my son did it in Minnesota, and when he told me that scared me to death, but I found out the ice is 10 feet deep or something up there. <laughs> Maybe not quite that deep. <laughs> Deeper than here. So your parents, your mother taught school. Yeah. What did your, did your father just farm or did he do something else? Yeah, he basically did farm. Um, and he, he was in World War One, stayed in the Army, and then he got out, stayed in the National Guard. He got to be company commander of the whole armor here in Kingbridge. He liked the food of that life. <laughs> I like a little supplemental income too, then. Huh? You get a little supplemental income from, from that. I suppose. I, I guess very little it, at yeah, that time. Probably back then, it probably was very little. Yeah. Got a little, I'm sure, because they'd go, like in the summertime, they'd go to Fort Sill for a two weeks training deal, the local boys. And they did that to about nice 19, <laughs> 1940. <laughs> when World War II got out, he was about 40 years old. I think he was just on the line that rather than go to the Army, let's leave us kids. So he got out of the Army then about 1940 didn't have to go then. Well, being a farmer, there were some exemptions yeah, and things along that way. <coughs> Farming about three quarters of land at that mm -hmm. time. Look out there. Well, try not to follow it. <laughs> yeah, it's been a military family. Yeah. As he said, our dad was in the military. Jim was in the Navy. The brother that lives in Utah was in the Navy. Well, I better back up a generation. Our dad was in the military, his brother was in the military, and their sister was a nurse during World War II and was stationed in England. 
So those three were all military. Now I'll get to the next level. <laughs> brother Jim was in the Navy, and the other brother was also in the Navy. Navy yeah, during the Korean deal. <clears throat> so we're three children then? Uh, you yes, uh -huh. there's three of us yeah. that are yeah. original yeah. Gilmores, I guess yeah, you'd yeah. say. <laughs> and what's the order? I'm the oldest one. Oh. Yeah, and then a brother, and then she's a baby. I'm, I'm the baby's <laughs> spoiled <laughs> sister. Okay, so it's it's the three of you, and then when the, the, the next, where's it going from here? The cross farm. Do you, you like moving forward? Well, that would well, be go to my, my girls. I got three girls. None of, them, none of them live here. They're all Barsville and Edmond and Tech, Dallas. <laughs> so. It would, it would go to them someday. But what they'll do, they'll probably eventually sell it. I imagine nobody's going to be farming okay. anymore in the family. Now, their three sons in law are all, you know, professional other things. So it's sad in this community. When we were growing up, you know, there were houses every quarter, oh, to, yeah. well, not yeah. quarter, but half a mile. Yeah. And they all had children, a lot of young men. None of those young men, except Jim and one other, yeah. uh, stayed farms. with the farms. Yeah. They got an education and did other things. But. Well, they just like where our house is out there now, there was one, two, three, and that road there, there was about five more houses used to be, and they're all gone, burned them, or got rid of them, you know. Yeah, there's <laughs> very few older houses left out there. Of course, there's no new houses. No new ones built. being built we're, either. We're so yeah. It's just so, farmland and pasture for the most yeah. part. Um, well, especially then, out where this cross area is. Okay, well then let's switch gears and move to talk about the Gilmore Farm. Gilmore then. One, okay. Yeah. So uh, tell us how they came to be in Oklahoma. Well, I don't know exactly how they actually, I guess it, Heard that the land was cheap, I suppose, in Oklahoma. That Gilmore family came from Illinois. And uh, her granddad came down here, like I say, in 1904. I don't know whether he just, he bought that farm then. And, uh, he purchased it? Yeah, yeah, in 1904. I don't even know what they did for it. Five thousand dollars. Five thousand mm dollars. -hmm. See, it went up, didn't it, from eighteen ninety two? Yeah. For how many acres? Hundred sixty. Hundred sixty acres there. Yeah. So they came, came down here in nineteen four. Well, our, our dad and brother, his brother, they were born in Illinois. Right? So our he was married. Mary, he was married when he came. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Because our dad was born in 1900, and then they came here in 1904. I think our aunt, I think she was born here in Oklahoma. I believe right? so. I think mm -hmm. she was born about 1906, wasn't it? I think so. so how many children um, for that family? Well, there was three. Three. Just three. Three. There were two boys and a girl. There. Okay. Dad and his brother and sister. Okay. Our aunt, there's... She was a nurse. She never married. She never married her whole life. Mm -hmm. But her uncle, Gene was his name. He was, like I say, he was in the military during World War II. And then he got education and teaching. He came back to, we got a school here in Cambridge is named after. It's a Gilmore school up here, a junior high school up here. And he was a Spent all, all his life in the teaching profession. He was principal at principal. that school for a good that's, number of years, and that's one reason the school was built um, about the time while he, about the time he was retiring. So it was it, named it, it, after him. Yeah. So he chose not to farm. Yes, and no. there was another yeah. son that didn't stay with the farm. Yeah. So that's how your father came to, to have it? That's yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. I guess he bought it out of sister and brother's interest in, I suppose, they're way back there. I never did really say how they, they were. Well, then how did it come to you? Well, I came to my, say to my sister and brother, and I bought out sister and brother okay. eventually on the 
home place there, yeah. Okay. And what was it primarily used for? It's all wheat, wheat, wheat and cattle, yeah, okay. yeah. And I always had it then. I mean, yeah. That's why you mm -hmm. bought it too. Yeah, yeah, it was always farmed way back there, you know, in the early days when they came here, I guess, and started farming, you know. So. This says the family, this is on the Gilmores now, when our, our granddad came. The family livestock and farm equipment were shipped by rail in two cars, with Mr. Gilmore riding the freight cars and other members of the family coming by passenger train. Mm -hmm. They were, <laughs> yeah, I said that'd been the mother and, and two yeah. uh, small children. Yeah. A four year old and yeah. a three year old. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Had they been farmers there too? Do we know? You don't know? Yeah, they did. Oh. Had, had they farmed in Yeah, they had, a, they, they had a farm in Illinois there. I think it was about, it was about 100 miles southwest of Chicago is where they originated from. They had a farm up there. Troy Grove, Illinois. Troy Grove, yeah. Trying to take Troy. out of Home of Wild Bell Hickok. <coughs> <laughs> with her aunt there one time, I went with her up there to visit her. Some of her friends, I guess it was, up there at this Troy Grove little town about like Cambridge. And, and that's the only time we was ever back there, as far as I know, <laughs> went up there. Do you know what brought them here? I mean, why, why Kingfisher? What, what? Why, do you know why they came to Kingfisher? No, I don't know. Unless land was cheap down here or something, or they didn't like the terrible cold weather up there, maybe, I don't know, you know. And, Get a lot colder and what winters was a lot harder in Illinois than they were in out here. And I don't know the really I ever been here to say why well, they really came out here unless the land was cheap. Of course, back then I know it was a lot cheaper than what it was in Illinois. But, well, and when they purchased the property, was there already a house on it or did they have to build? There was a house there on this Gilmore place there. At, I don't know whether it was a any picture of that. I it says the original sod and shanty type housing. See, this had been there 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, it says there were roads and and things like that were laid out. The original sod and shanty type housing had been replaced by carpenter built western frame construction. Well, I think there's a picture in there of the house back in there. Yeah, when there that was off the driveway of where that house is now. That house was built in 1917. That's the one you grew up yeah. in? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, describe it, the inside of it. Well, it's got, I, or actually, the original house there was four rooms downstairs and four rooms upstairs. And it had yeah, a yeah. basement, it had a- yeah, full base, well, no. Well, it was about full. a quarter basement in the house, there's a quarter basement in the house there. And uh, like I said, there's four rooms. They had cistern water out there, they had a cistern, it's still there practically. Yeah. And, uh, and where was your room? Well, it was up to our brother. We all three slept upstairs. We all, each one had our own room upstairs. Folks slept downstairs, there's one bedroom downstairs, and a living room, and a dining room, and a kitchen downstairs. We didn't have a bathroom till what, about 1947, I think. Indoor bathroom till about, they didn't build it. They, actually, it was kind of funny. They put a bathroom upstairs when they built the house. Had, to, had a room for it. <laughs> had a room. Well, they had to run the pipe and stuff yeah. up there and place for a, a stool and a tub, but they never put it in there because I guess they didn't have enough water back then, you know. Well, it didn't get electricity till REA came in there about 19, late 30s, I guess, when they got the right, so got electricity in there. So, but they never did put a bathroom upstairs till I moved there. We put in a stool and sink and everything upstairs so the girls could have a place to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and then, then my dad in 19, I think that was 1947, they, they did build on a bathroom downstairs there. And we got indoor bathrooms, shower, sink, and 
Yeah, we, yeah. we had what was called a wash house. It was where the laundry was done. You know, yeah. a separate little building just kind of off the back porch. Yeah. And uh, that was, you know, after electricity got there, my mom had a electric wash uh, machine. Maytag washing machine that you washed in that a while, and then you put it over here to rinse, and you put it over here to rinse, and then of course you hung it on on the wall. Yeah. And that's where we showered. My dad yeah. took a milk bucket and fixed a, a like your um, sprinkler right. can with the holes in it. Mm -hmm. He welded that or soldered yeah. it probably. Uh, and it had a switch, you could turn it off and on and have a pulley rope and that's where we all showered. Pour water and that. It had a little room about four foot square off the corner of this little room out there. That's our, our shower and it seemed that floor and had drained a, outside. Had a butane stove to heat the wash water and you could heat kind of in heat another that room up in the winter time. Heat the water actually on that stove and you know have some warm water in your shower. Yeah. But before in the winter time we took our baths in the kitchen in one of the wash tubs. The round tubs when it's square. Oh well it's square. I don't know. Because I got not two of ours, but two of somebody's in our my backyard now. <laughs> and I got to be first, <coughs> of course. <laughs> and, they're all and they took, I don't know how they took their turns, but they took their turns. And uh, this, of course, then uh, our great-grandfather was a native of Dunlop, Scotland. And he migrated to Canada at the age of 18 and then on to Illinois. And... Uh, that's where we get our conservatism, I think, is from our Scottish ancestry. <laughs> <laughs> I get accused every now and then about, you're too Scotch. I say, well, <laughs> raised that way. <laughs> Waste not, want not, I yeah. think, was the old uh, saying. Yeah. Well, were either one of you involved with 4-H since you lived on the farm? Well, I was in 4-H right when I was probably 13 or 14, yeah. started out in 4 H. then as <laughs> soon as they got to high school, school. freshman, then I would got an FFA there. Yeah, I was an FFA, yeah. Yeah, I stayed in that till I got American farmer's degree back there in 1951, I think it was, in Kansas City and did that. Other than that. <laughs> well, well, did you always plan to be a farmer? I mean, is that yeah, what you Yeah, pretty, pretty much, pretty much, yeah, I grew up pretty much. My dad had a thrash machine back there in the late 30s and early 40s, you know, they went, had the bundles out in the field. And we start, started out with that when I was a kid there, got to, well, about the early 40s there, they, Horses are pretty well gone out, so they started pulling the bundle wagons with little tractors. A friend of mine, neighbor there, we had a little tractor. We took turns from driving that out in, in the field for the boys that pitched the bundles. We wasn't big enough to do that, but we got to haul the bundles to the thrash machine. My dad there, they, they kind of custom thrashed all, all our neighbors out in there. Right? Get theirs thrashed and go to the neighbors and thrash for them. He was going to be glad to be a farmer. So yeah. That's kind of how we started out being a farmer, I guess. Awesome. <laughs> Talking about lightening the load, this says a second hand tractor was bought in 1919 and that lightened the load of the horse and speeded up the farm work. Mm -hmm. hmm. So that was the first granddad tractor was yeah. in 1919. Back to I got one with dad bought in 1936. I've got it out there for him. Had it restored here four or five years ago like it came from the factory. And it works? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We'll start at least. Yeah, yeah. We it run. works. Yeah. It works. It. Yeah, the, it's an international harvester and the boys out in North Town are Case International dealers there. They have an annual feed once a year in the spring or we brought it in there every time of year just to show it. <laughs> so well, let me back up a minute then too. What what year were you born? Nineteen thirty. Nineteen thirty and then thirty six. Thirty six. And if you're in Kingfisher County. Yeah. Or? Yeah, we were all born here. But. We were born born in quote our Aunt Mary's hospital. Yeah. The nurse hospital. She had gotten her nursing degree and she and a friend uh, opened the hospital here in 
Kingfisher, and all three of us were born in that hospital. And I th at that time, the mothers had to stay in the hospital about 10 days and had to go home to the farm by ambulance. <laughs> yeah, they really kept me in the hospital a long time. Ten days too. <laughs> My, how times have changed. Their daughter is an ob gyn physician, so they oh, know Edmund, yeah. they know about how long <clears throat> they let these mothers stay in. <laughs> yeah. Very long they anymore. Stay now. <laughs> well, one day they're gone home. Yeah. Well, where did you go to elementary school then? Right here, King Fisher. He went one year at well, the country school. And then it closed in. Called Burson School, which was uh, yeah, the one that... Yeah, my home place there was a mile north and a mile east from where we live. We, two miles from where that house is there. And how would you get there? Well, if it walked, if it was, <laughs> there was a neighbor a half mile north of it, it was going there too, and we'd walk over there if the weather was good. If the weather was bad, the folks would take us in the car. <laughs> so we went one year over there and then they closed the school. So started to Cambridge and then. And then they didn't have buses till about 1948, I think, where they got Cambridge or had buses. Before that, my neighbors around there, was two or three of us the folks would get together, and pick us up and take us to school in the morning. Maybe one of the other ones would pick us up at four o'clock and bring us back home. <laughs> So that's the way we got to school for quite a little while there until we started running buses, I think about 48, where they had school buses here in Cambridge. That's about the time you graduated? Yeah, I graduated in 49, so we didn't get to ride bus very long. People were much more friendly in those days because they didn't have TV and they didn't have all this other electronic gadgets. I don't know. A little yeah. sidebar here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if something was mentioned about old time records. Mm -hmm. And our our son lives here in King Vision, has a 12 year old son, and he said, I bet he had, has never seen a vinyl uh, um, record. Yeah. record. 45, 70, or, the, or the plastic 45s, yeah. or LPs, 33s, or probably doesn't know what a cassette is, or an eight track, because yeah. all of that, except I've got them all. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a player that will play all of them. <laughs> he said, our son said, we're going to have to get him over there and show him how it was back when he was a kid, the father, when he was a kid. The lady, they bought farm from the door. She had the old Victoria with the round ones. <laughs> Since they, had, they were different, she, you don't see those anymore either. No, I've got, I have one of the old Victoria round, uh -huh. yeah. whatever they call them, left. to mm -hmm. play. Fragile. Anyway, it was just, uh, you know, you asked once about if there was any additional income. Mm -hmm. Well, for him, <clears throat> they trap skunks and possums, and once in a while oh, they yeah, get a yeah. mink. Yeah. And then they, wasn't yeah. any money, but they, one, one year was a lot of snow, and he and his friend went shooting rabbits. That's why we don't have any rabbits nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, they had 75 of the animals. Yeah, I got we got 47 that afternoon. They turned the school out because they thought they was going to have a blizzard and it kind of let up. And we got in the pickup and we started driving the country roads. And every black spot you'd seen in the snow was a jackrabbit. <laughs> we shot 47 that afternoon. I didn't, see anymore. <laughs> I didn't remember that number, but I, uh, yeah. they hung them up on the barn, which we have a yeah, picture of somewhere, picture somewhere. Of all of that. But, uh, you know, and, and did fought with them. Have, have them for dinner, rabbit <laughs> rabbit stew? Yeah, no. I could have, I guess. I Occasionally, know, Mom would fry one, probably, but probably pretty later. steadily. Heavy frost before you eat rabbit in winter. Yeah. <laughs> you have to do it in the summer. Yeah. yeah. Now we have no jackrabbits. Yeah, right? they can't. Yeah, they're rare. Just they're they're very just sad. not any jackrabbits. I don't know what, what's happened to them. Coyotes. You just them. don't ever see one anymore. The only thing left is armadillos. <laughs> yeah. yeah or something with those in Texas. <laughs> There's somebody there. Sure, not any rabbits anymore. Well, did you have chores that you had to do every day on the farm? Oh yeah, yeah. We well, had to <laughs> feed cow, cow, help feed cows and stuff like that. You know, in the winter time. Well, I had sheep. Our sheep, dad had we had, had, sheep. had. We kept about fifty head of sheep out there. Even after I started farming, there we raised sheep mm -hmm. up till 
not too many years ago. Well, did they uh, designate girls, boys, jobs, or just everybody did everything? I got oh. to stay in the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One thing, talking about him wanting to always be a farmer, I meant to interject there. Mother missed him one day. And she looked out, and Dad was in the field, oh, eighth of a mile diagonal up there. And there he was, I don't know, he's three years old or something. He was going to go get on the tractor with Dad, you know. <laughs> to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happened there once in a while. Yeah. Or was it take off? Hiking the two across. of them, I guess, then, when the other one was old enough to trot along. But talking about memories in the house, uh, of course, as he said, we slept upstairs and there was a, a grate in the top where you could let right above the floor furnace on the first level and there was this opening up to the upstairs and you could open that and let a little heat come up there. We had no heat in that upstairs. Yeah, yeah, heat. We'd go to bed with a, a hot water bottle or just a quart jar with hot water in it wrapped around. That's the way we sort of kept from freezing by the time we'd get to sleep. But. Um, when, they, when that was open in the winter and Dad would go out and find, and find that he had a newborn lamb that needed help, he would bring that lamb in the house, yeah, put it in the box and set it, it on the furnace so it would get warm. And of course that newborn sheep yeah. smell <laughs> came upstairs. Well, yeah, upstairs. <laughs> Probably didn't smell too bad downstairs, but whew, it came right upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. The cuter little the lambs going out to pasture, they, they yes, jumped like they jumped. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, yeah, jumping, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. my dad usually kept about 300 laying, laying yeah, hens. Yeah, we had about mm -hmm. three to 500 wow, chickens. chickens all the time. Yeah. That was a, a cash crop for yeah. them. Are you yeah. a chicken person? Well, I think everybody has a, a, a technique when it comes to butchering a chicken. Oh, did oh, did wow. your family have a technique? No, it took well, yeah. a, Took a knife and chopped them up, which I don't, I, hardly anybody, women, would know how to cut one up nowadays. <laughs> Run them through those saws. But like how would you slaughter them to begin with? It's what she thought. Oh, how you slaughter them? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> Dad chopped off a Had a tree, tree stump out there with a couple of nails. Two nails sticking up in like that, and you put the head between the nails, nails and <laughs> chunk, and you chop them. You could even pull them off if they're real tender or chop them with them. Something like that, yeah. And whose job was that? Did you both have to do it? Well, yeah. I don't know. I think Dad did most of Dad it. Dad did it. Um, and them. When they'd go to the field, and then Mom and I got, when I got old enough, she and I pretty much did it. Then they dip them in hot water then. And Boiling then water. To get the feathers to come off. the feathers off easy, come off real easy. And you had to pick the feathers off, and then you had to gut them, and then you had to cut them up. Yeah. That was a major... Uh, spring right, I guess you would Very say. Very few people even yeah. have cut up a chicken anymore. That's what my we were don't. saying. Yeah, the way yeah. they butcher them and have them in the stores, it doesn't yeah. look like yeah, they're not cut yeah. Yeah. pieces of chicken like we cut them. Yeah. And did she have a big garden? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, we had a pretty good garden. All fruit had there. an orchard with all kinds yeah, of fruit we had trees. A pretty good sized orchard right north of the house out there. Mm -hmm. We probably had 40 trees, peach trees, and plum trees. Apricot, apricot, persimmon, yeah. pears. Yeah. She canned a lot too. Oh, canned. yeah. Canned everything. Everything was canned day. originally. She yeah. never owned a refrigerator, yeah. I mean, a deep freeze, excuse me, a deep freeze. She never owned a deep freeze. We had uh, what we call lockers here in Kingfisher that you could rent and, you know, yeah, I'll take your put your chicken put your and meat and meat meat chickens meat in there. Butcher the calf or something. You, well, they actually, they butcher them right there by that lot. Yeah, down there. I guess yeah, they would. bring a calf in there a lot, and they'd butcher them, and then they put them in a, cut them up in hamburger and steak and whatever, and then you rent a locker, frozen locker down there, and then you could, at a key, I guess, you could come in yeah. there anytime you needed meat and go back and open your locker and get whatever you wanted out of there. Hmm. When did that stop doing it? Well, I guess when refrigeration came in, or well, deep, freeze. deep freezes became yeah. popular and people yeah. had then yeah. had their own at home. They didn't need yeah. that service anymore. Doing that. Yeah. There originally was an ice plant before refrigerators. You know, yeah. there were ice boxes. Yeah, you probably deep. don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, you can go down there and buy, buy your block of ice. Of ice. Forty, fifty pound chunk of ice down there, and they carry it out and put it rapidly. Sack or something till you got at home, it wouldn't melt much, you know. 
then you could put it in your oh ice box ice yeah. box they call them yeah they just wasn't electric or nothing you just stuck the ice in there and it it lasts I don't know a few days before you know I was pretty young at the time but the 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 main refrigerator part was stuck out on our um, porch our back porch mm -hmm. and then just mo mostly the door came into the kitchen mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, the ice was, you there, could just yeah. put the ice in the back. Our dad was not educated. He went through the eighth grade, but he went to a, some kind of a trade school up yeah. in Kansas. Yeah. And he had a lot of natural um, mechanical ability, apparently. He could build most anything. Yeah. And he'd come up with these innovative ways of doing things, like we had no air conditioning. Well, he cut a hole. Mother had a cabinet kind of like this mm -hmm. and went through into the dining. I mean, the dining was over there. And he had, there was a door down here for storage. Well, he cut a hole in the floor and you could get that damp, cool basement air up, a big fan down there that would blow that up. And when we were in the kitchen and were hot, we'd open the door and some fairly cool air would come in here. And if you were feeding the thrashing machine crew, you'd shut this door. And it would come in on the side. <laughs> into the dining room. Uh, you know, he just came up with all kinds of yeah. things that you had to do because we didn't have central heat and air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. <laughs> well, did you add it when you moved into that house? What's that? Did you add it when you moved into the house? Yeah, heat and air conditioning. Yeah, we put in heat and air conditioning. Yeah. When we moved there, I guess yeah. we asked when we got in central yeah. heat and air. Probably shortly after yeah, you moved. Yeah. So once yeah. you graduated from high school, <laughs> then you went, worked, or yeah. you stayed, stayed on the farm? I, for a short while. I yeah, I did, and then, and then I was going to get drafted, so I got in the Navy in 1951. I went two years, went East Coast on a ship out of Boston, Newport, Rhode Island. Then I got to travel the world. Yeah, yeah I got was 18 <laughs> months, I got about 21 different countries and islands. They went to Europe, they went to Africa, Europe, they went South around America. The Cape Horn, they escorted the aircraft carrier that was too big to go through the canal <laughs> and then get back in California, but it came back to the canal and went back yeah, to Yeah, went through the Rhode canal, canal, and we went to Europe, and Scotland, Norway, Portugal, yeah. France. <laughs> And saw the world, and then he came yeah. back to farm <laughs> and get married. <laughs> and then he wouldn't go anywhere. He'd been everywhere. Yeah, he'd been everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So, at what point did you buy and move back into the the family house, the, the family farmhouse? Well, nineteen uh, fifty sixty four. Sixty four. Sixty Came back and rented some land farm. We we lived about six miles northwest of that home place there on mm -hmm. called east of Lowell. If you've been out to Lowell, yeah. we yeah. lived six miles east of Lowell right on the Blacktop Road there. There was a creek there and we farmed Cooper there for what nine years I guess yeah. it was. And then some the folks there. moved to town. So then that's when we moved to the home place then in sixty four, yeah. So. And then did your daughters have chores? Oh, oh, so no, we still have a few chickens and <laughs> yeah. nothing like. Yeah, they used to have a baby. Like we used to have to go help. We just do bales or stuff that had to help push yeah. stuff or something like that. <laughs> yeah, they never did actually run. I don't know, Julie, she was a little more countryfied than the other girls, I guess. She run a tractor. She ran a tractor. She was good at it. This is what became the MD. <laughs> In fact, I had a, one quit farming there five years ago. I had a farm sale, and sold all the equipment and stuff. Had an old Ford tractor there. And so I'd sell it on the sale and looked around. Here's our Julia, I remember her. She was bidding on a thing and bought it. I said, What in the world do you want that for? Man, that's why I learned to drive. I just couldn't leave, that's couldn't right. see it <laughs> leave the farm. The <laughs> so, so we got it out there to farm. Still use it a lot. <laughs> no, it's not roadside no. <laughs> oh, what was someone living in the house now? No, we haven't done anything yet. It's you just moved in here in March of this year. Getting. <laughs> you plan to do something? Well, I don't, don't know. know yet. Girls Probably don't want us to sell it. Like, <laughs> do, do something there when. 
do something, I suppose, you know. Girls, they wasn't very happy. They thought we had to keep yeah. that house. They said that's where they grew up and everything. So. Nobody else wanted to should live there. <laughs> well, then what prompted the move into town? Well, you know, they just figured it was getting old enough. They better do something <laughs> for too long. I'd always said if anything happened to him, I moved to town because I couldn't keep up with the things around there that he helped with, you know. Well, is the land leased by someone now to do weed or just Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I actually got. I got four quarters of the eighty of land there. I rented it out to neighbor boys there for me. Yeah. They started farming part of it before I hit before we moved it. Quit farming really. Uh, well talk a little bit about the buildings that are on it now. Well, uh, the house and one, two in that picture there, there's about three Buildings was originally built back, about right after they built the house. I understand, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it's for my our time, you know. And I built two barns out there now. That since I lived there, and other than that, it's everything else is still original, you know. Much. Was there well, a chicken coop? Is it still? Yeah, it's still. Yeah, there. yeah, the, the chicken, chicken house is still there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Fenced off and had to keep the dog in there once in a while. Wash house, the wash house, they call it. It's, it's still there. Mm -hmm. A couple of other barns. It's... And the outhouse? No, no it's the gone. Is gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the cement <laughs> stool part of it's still out there. Yeah, it's out there by the trash had cans. About a four by four cement floor in there. And the old, where them. the stool seat actually was, it, it's still out there. They never did throw it, get rid of that. Other than that, it's pretty much original. Well, talk a little bit about the, the conservation efforts on the, on the on farms. farms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understood that, according to Dad there, that was the first terraces in King Richard County back in the late 20s. On the Gilmore Farm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah, I guess they had to survey them off the hand there. I guess they made them with horses and stuff there, you know, way back in the early 20s, they didn't have any big tractors or anything, bulldozers to build them like they do today, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had them rebuilt some there now, but the, all three of the places there have got terraces on them. So, but... Uh, and then did, did they do any Ponds, build ponds. Yeah. That's part of that. Yeah, I don't know that pond there at the home place there. <laughs> it's been there when we was kids because we used to go down there and ice skate and fish. It's kind of natural for them. Oh, you got a grass down to it. You and us. There's and a dam on one end. Our, our lane that when we went swimming. We used to go swimming. I didn't think nothing bad. We always went swimming down in the ponds. <laughs> Yeah. Over on the Willis Pond, they even had a slide. <laughs> yeah, well, that one walk. place I had over there, it's not oh, this home place, but we had a diving kids. board and a slipper slide on the pond dam. <laughs> when they closed down this school that he attended one year, uh, you know, the, all the rural schools had a slipper slide and swing set. So my dad got it, I don't know whether they bought it or whether they just, you know, Said move it. Yeah, move <laughs> but anyway, it. he put it over on this slipper slide on this and then pond built there. a so springboard. About so. every Saturday or Sunday in the summer, all and every boys and we all go swimming there, fishing. There. Well, when you were swimming, was there parental supervision or they no, just trusted you? To, no, well, they were old enough by the end. Of, yeah, we was teenagers, I guess. You'd say. Yeah, we never had anybody, any folks that ever <laughs> went with us or anything. Tell me not. We'd go over there. Yeah, yeah, that was. Well, what were holidays like in, in, in that house in your childhood? Well, we always had pretty big. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving and Christmas, didn't we? we always had. Yeah, Thanksgiving. Mother had a niece that had 12 children, lived over at Watonga. Yeah. And she, Mother would have all of the cross relatives that were in the county next door or whatever. So we had a full house for Thanksgiving because yeah. it wasn't any hardly in Gilmore. It's just the 
Yeah, uh, there were three. <laughs> Four. Yeah. Well, Aunt Mary might even been in the service, yeah. but anyway. Uh, big family Thanksgiving. Christmas was more or less just our family. Yeah, pretty much. But Dad would go, we had the conservation shelter belts after the Dust Bowl days. Mm -hmm. That's what a mile and a half yeah. was. Yeah. And Dad would go cut the top, supposedly, out of one of the cedar trees. Well, when you're out in the wide open, they don't look so big, but when you get them close closer to putting them in the house, they grow. And he would, you know, kind of, he was six feet two. He would put his hand out like this and try to measure it. But he still, when it got in the house, sometimes had to be trimmed down a little bit. Touch, touch the roof for years. But we always Same. had native cedar trees. For years. For Christmas, yeah. There lots of, lots of decorations on it. Yeah. Gifts yeah. weren't too plentiful, you know, because we didn't want things. Well, we didn't have stuff you didn't like have to, to do today. Sure. We, needed this. <laughs> we, we farmed mm -hmm. under our big elm tree in the backyard for shade. We took nails, put them in the ground, took string, made the fence. And, <laughs> and uh, like I said, our dad was pretty handy and he built things from wood. And then the boys learned to do those things. And so we had all kinds of little houses, barns, whatever. Mm -hmm. and, Stuff, yeah. And went out and played in the dirt, so to speak. You know, I yeah. did too. Because the closest girl to me was two and a half miles, I think. Yeah, yeah, about two so. and a half miles. Well, <laughs> I was a tomboy. Yeah, <laughs> I girl. still am. You see this haircut? I just got a cut yesterday. <laughs> what, did you have a favorite meal? What, what would it be? Oh, fried, fried chicken, chicken. Fried chicken. Fried chicken. Yeah, 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 fried chicken was our main, main dish all the time. And, no. and then I all the fried chicken. Yeah. Mother was excellent at angel food cake because she had all the eggs. Yeah, made a lot of angel food cakes. A lot of cake. angel food cakes. Yeah. And of course, the fruit cobblers from the can, peach trees. Peach and apricots. Peaches, yeah, we had a lot of peach. Berries. Stuff, stuff we had like chip that. berry vines. We had a lot yeah. of berry fruit yeah. things like that. So. Cows to milk? Yeah, yeah. we didn't, never did milk big. Boy, just milk one or two Usually cows. About, about all we ever milked. As far as milk, you know. And whose chore was that to do? Yeah, yeah. or dad. He did most. Yeah, he I never did most milk much, a little bit, but not a whole lot. He did most of the milking. Other than that, we never did raise hogs either. We didn't like hogs. <laughs> chickens sheep. and sheep. Chicken yeah. and sheep. Chicken and sheep was their main livestock. Cows and cattle. And the sheep you would shear and then sell the wool? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They sheared sheep every spring. And they had a couple. Of, we never did actually do much of it ourselves, but they had a couple guys around here in the county that did that basically for a living, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I think they, so. Uh -huh. In the spring, they share our sheep and the neighbors and everybody else's quite a few there was quite a few sheep herds in the county and then they just make the rounds and then they would take it away you wouldn't have to worry about taking it tomorrow well yeah there. we had to do no, that we, that's family they had big old special sacks there they was about six foot long and about three foot in diameter in fact i still got it out home but dad made a little box thing <laughs> when you got with sheer Sheep sheared, you put it in this box, and then you had a certain kind of string. You laid it that across the box four ways, and then you tied it, and then you had a bundle of wool, and you put it in the sack, then, and you got a sack full of big old sacks. It was about, like I say, it was about six foot long, about three foot in diameter. You filled them up, and then they, they had a deal here in the Kingfisher where they used to pick it up down here. To, Railroad. Yeah. And then I got to where I think we had to take it to, you know, where we took that last there. We were, Enid, yeah. May have went to Enid with it, it seemed like some outfit bought it up there, you know. Yeah, we'd have, I don't know, three or four sacks of wool, I guess. I'm sure about 50 head, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, out them big sacks. Ship it in a way. That was the main spring operation. I guess. You ask about 4-H. I married a 
Mr. Hopkins <clears throat> from Southeast of Kingfisher, and his parents were farmers, and he became an educator. He said he didn't want any more of that. He had to start driving a tractor during World War II because all the men left the farms. And I think he started driving a tractor full time in the day when he was about eight years old, and his dad would drive at night. He was an only child. But anyway, we have uh, three sons, and since they had access to farm facilities, they all three were in 4-H and raised uh, Angus steers, mostly. That's what they did. Once in a while, they had some chickens. They had one that laid different color of eggs, aracondas. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I've heard the term, but yeah. mm -hmm. Because there again, the farm had chickens, and uh, mm -hmm. they decided to try something a little fancier than just legers. <laughs> Did they go to 4-H Roundup? At oh yeah, went to Roundup, and uh, one of them went to Nationals in Washington, D.C., or wherever mm -hmm. that was. I think just one of them went to that. But they were pretty active. They never did go FFA when they got, you know, the, into high school. They had music and sports. <laughs> What did your mother belong to? A homemaker club? Oh yes, mm -hmm. she was one of the originals of that. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Very active in home extension. She was your belly, wasn't she? Made shirts for the boys and all my clothes. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of them made shirts. So nice, but everybody competed. Yes, There's so many shirt clubs in this county. Hmm. You had to have about like 12, 20 items to compete, and every club it, it was a big thing. Now it is not very used as much. Yeah. Did she quilt? Not uh, much. Uh, she was a seamstress. Not not so much. Of a quilt. She could look at a picture and make a dress that looked like that picture. She was very talented for sewing. Those skills have gone, haven't they? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think yeah. so. Yeah. so. I do that. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, farm life, because she did have some egg gathering chores when, you know, when the guys would be in the field and stuff, and I did that too. But sewing was, you know, her main um, activity with the <laughs> sewing machine, rather than hand quilting. And music, she could play the piano, she could play it. You name her top song, she could play it, she... <laughs> well, that means that when we then asked, what did you do for fun? Since you had all these chores and work, what did, <laughs> what did you do for fun? Well, our uh, boys ran her wheel. I didn't fish a little about her main thing, I guess, of what we used to do was hunting and duck hunting and stuff like that. Well, in fact, they used to have a Kyle Roundup club here in Cambridge. And boy, these guys, oh, there was two or three groups of them. They had the Kyle Hounds, you know. They had a regular Kyle hunting deal there in the fall. Called the Kite Roundup Club there. They'd go out. Cops are pretty thick, you know, and the guys didn't like them. They'd go out and, like, a section of land there. They'd take a truck, and the guys would all get in the truck, and then they'd walk through the section, scare the cops out, and then the boys had these cow hounds. They'd be on the other side of the section. When the cops come out, they'd turn the dog loose and <laughs> catch them. <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't well, have for the quite a while like there. They, Box on the back. They'd, they'd meet down here at the old armory in the, later in the fall. And they'd have a barbecue and yeah, dinner and everything agree. else down there for the everybody who hunted coyotes. <laughs> quite a quite an operation there. Even you know. now the coyotes are bad. Yeah, yeah they got anymore. real bad here this last year or two. There. We lost yeah. all our dogs to coyotes before we moved to town. Yeah, there's gone through that. There, I only know one or two. Two guys got any cow hounds to hunt cows anymore around here. That's all there is anymore. But like I say, they, I guess the cows there, I guess they sent in, I don't know, through the. Oh. We used to pay them a bit, wouldn't it be good for a skin or? The ears, I think. Mean, the ears off in the state. So yeah, yeah, we used pay to pay, them, pay about a dollar or something like that for you. They, 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 through the county, some kind of county deal there. You caught a cow out there, they could take the ears in and get a dollar or two for them. But last year, though, the, I don't know, it's the organization there, the. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know who was brought that plane. 
They brought in a plane here. Actually, they went out in Holmes West here last winter. And they shot 30 some cows in one day out there. Yeah. They were killing calves and everything else. Could have done some more, but they didn't have any for fuel to do it two days. <laughs> so, you asked you know, did but you ask what we did for fun. You know, hunting was kind of his outlet, I'm sure. And uh, I learned to sew. I did that and enjoyed that. And just walking around the farm and playing in the dirt. Like I said, we had uh, little farm implements, of course, and, and did that. Toys, yeah. And a tire swing on the tree? Oh. No, we had a well, different one. I don't know if we ever had it. Really had no, no, we had an actual swing set, mm -hmm. yeah. probably built out of pipe or something, and I had nice memories. Yeah, see your finger. <laughs> he was oiling the old push lawnmower, <laughs> and he, of course, was older, and he'd flip the blades to get it to turning, and I was about three, and I put my hand up there. And <laughs> up and cut her finger off. Oh, cut the end of my finger off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was, was a fun day. <laughs> <laughs> And then Mom always told the story about him. Of course, that was in probably 39, and uh, had some old, well, probably wasn't old at that time, vehicle. And he'd be looking over the back seat, and he'd say, we're going 30, we're going 35, we're going 40, we're going 45. <laughs> Your dad was trying to hurry get me to the doctor. <laughs> Probably was a new car that yeah, year. Did everything that year. New yeah. tractor, new car. Must have had a good crop that year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, folks had that new Dodge in yeah. 1936, I think it was. <laughs> they yeah. did pretty good there in the Dust Bowl. Yeah. 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 Back in the Dust Bowl days in the early 30s, there real bad there. Well, it's pretty bad in the early 50s. Yes. Because I remember. When I got out of the Navy yeah. in 53 and came home there to that farm there, pasture north of the house, it blew it out of the field, probably that deep for 10 or 15 feet, the sand off the field there, that yeah. 1953 or 50, up to 2, 53, because when you all got married, it was so hot. When we yeah. got married in 54, yeah. it was so hot. But while they were, both of the boys were in the Navy, the it was so dry, and the, oh, yeah. the dirt, the sand storm. would blow up. You know, here's your fence post, in halfway up that, and the grasshoppers would be solid on the wind backside. Shaded, shaded fence. Shaded from the, the fence post because the yeah. '50s, you know, were dry too. I of course wasn't there in the early <laughs> Dust Bowl days, so I don't know how it compares, but uh, it was pretty bleak there in the early '50s. Yeah. Day we got married is 105. Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't no air conditioning. conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what year was that? 53. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real hot. She was going to six months left to serve. But she was going to be in dry dock in Boston, so we got married and lived up there for six months. It's educational, too. Yeah. <laughs> Live in Boston. <laughs> From here, yeah. quite a change. Yeah, that was. A, Change in Boston. <laughs> any any uh, listen to baseball games and that sort of thing as as entertainment. Yeah, I don't Most know. Trainers have radio. We could listen to the radio. Oh, you said playing baseball. Yeah, no, listening to. Oh, listening younger, to. Oh, younger, okay. Younger okay. Days. Listen. No, our dad did that for us. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> he lifted all the ball games and oh, yeah. radio there all the time. Yeah, yeah. Get right up. Used the radio there and listen to the ball games. Yeah. And did they go to church? Yes, mm -hmm. first United Methodist here in Kingfisher. Yeah, yeah. So what, once the service was over on a typical Sunday afternoon in your teen, <laughs> teenage years, let's say. I don't know, can't remember doing much. <laughs> fried that. chicken for lunch? You probably went <laughs> over and had fried chicken for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> And back in for youth meetings, might have gone to the movie after that. Kingfisher well, had a theater. I, I think, yeah. I think the neighbor boys and us, we'd get together and go swimming in the pond. Yeah, on probably some more Sunday swimming. afternoon. <laughs> Any home remedies? 
he got stung by a bee, what would you do? <laughs> yeah. I don't remember getting stung by a bee, but I suppose I did. But so don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't so remember yeah. any particular iodine. We live by iodine, yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> iodine yeah. cure crazy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah wasn't too much excitement. <laughs> In World War One or World War Two years, you were your own doctor. You didn't have me. Yeah, we didn't have a <coughs> doctor in King Fisher because they were all gone. They were on service. And... Yeah. Well, how else has King Fisher changed then from your teenage years to now? If it had two theaters, it doesn't have any now. I don't think does yeah, it. We have one now because <coughs> one of the theaters, of course, had been screens. closed. The other one burned about six years ago. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. One yeah. night, just. Horrible, horrible. Yeah. And the, some of the leaders of the community have put some money together and others contributed and we have a real, what have they got, three or four little theaters? Yeah, three, three theaters that you can see in the evening. Done three different well, theaters. Even the only county around that even has, still has a theater. Well, they're driving the theater out south, even the town. Yeah, we did that some little, too. As teenagers, we did that. Yeah, they're driving movies. Dance, dance halls? Not, we had tried teen, uh, tried teen, teen towns, towns a time yeah. or two, but they didn't seem to last very long. Yeah. We had a roller rink at one time. Um, yeah, yeah. Not, well, the roller rink when we were kids was at the old armory. That's where it was. Yeah, yeah. And Dover had one. We'd go up there some. Yeah. yeah. But uh, there was an actual roller skating rink <clears throat> for our children. But we don't have that now. There's nothing in Kingfisher to do except go to the movies. Skate park. Yeah, that's <laughs> now we got the skate, skate park, park down there. Yeah. I don't think that's it right. gets much used. No, it doesn't. Oh, I, I'm not sure if I asked this, but how did your parents meet? Yeah. Yeah. Mom and Dad, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember anything really. Living well, in the same community. <laughs> well, how, how close are their farms then? How close are the, is the Cross Farm to the Gilmore Farm? Yeah, it's about four miles, three and a half, four miles between the farms, yeah. Probably through friends more than anything because, you know, they, they get a buggy and a horse and take a little spin in the country. And they, I know Mom mentioned that <clears throat> they went swimming in the Cimarron River. Now, I don't think Dad particularly haunted that area, but... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I heard them talk about swimming kids swimming in the yeah, in the river. river up there south of Dover. Can't swim too much today, though, could they? No, no, you can only <laughs> no, wade in it these days. They can't water in it hardly. Would they have gone to school together? No. 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 No, he actually went to Catholic school here in Kingfield. Yeah, I heard that he went to Catholic school here. Yeah. Where the mother went to this dance school where she taught. Yeah. Maybe church. Or not. Well, yeah, I don't know uh, how they actually ever met there, really. Were you raised Catholic? No. Oh, no. no. No, he was not no. raised a Catholic. Either. He just went to Catholic school. Right. I was just curious because back then it usually wasn't a accepted, you know, it's kind of hard if you well, were Catholic. Usually the Catholic kids ride the school buses with the, to the public school, you know right into town on school bus and somebody raised a fuss about that and he had to quit it. So the parents had to take him if they went to Catholic school, but one time they did ride the school buses together. Well, when, before they had school buses here, we, the neighbors there was well, they were Catholic. Catholic. Mm -hmm. Catholic. We were in the school, they, they'd take us to public school and then they'd drop their kids off at Catholic school. Yeah. Same way, pick them up in the evening or something, you know, they'd pick us up at the public school go by and pick them up to Catholic school and come home. <laughs> yeah, good. People work together. <laughs> well, how'd you meet your wife? What's that? How'd you meet your wife? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been too long ago, I can't remember. <laughs> Talk about putting you on the spot. Yeah, with her sitting there. <laughs> she had a friend that was dating your girl from Dover and she asked me if I wanted a double date. And she was a double date. Yeah, I guess that, that. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I know the 80s was a tough time too for farmers in, in this area. Did, did you uh, struggle during that time period in the 80s? Well, yeah. Things were. It wasn't, wasn't too bad. I don't think it was just large. Not too many years farm. where we didn't have a crop. Not many. We have Two years it wasn't great, but you know, it was fine. 
I wonder if that had the big hagel storm we were up there on the oh. east of Laurel. <laughs> yeah, they were, had a pretty bad hail storm. Of course, everybody on the north side of the house and all that. So, yeah. weather was always the, yeah, whether, whether you got good rains or not, yeah. you just couldn't control the weather. 57 had the big flood. Yeah. We got flooded. That's when we lived there east of Laurel on Cooper Creek there. And mm -hmm. 57 there, it flooded real bad there. And then the Dover had that terrible pair of folks there. The water got. South I had Asia. to fly out to get back to Kingfisher because all the bridges were gone. <laughs> Stem rock bridges, uh, bridging off the bridge itself with the entryway to it, you know, the road up to it, you couldn't get through for a long while. Well, I was in 57 there, yeah, that's when I was up with the folks there. We lived yeah. there east of Law on the creek there. I had to go to Hennessy and left with and, uh, my mothers at Dover. And <laughs> couldn't, couldn't get home and got back to Dover, and then I was we flooded for, I was in there about three or four days for it. Yeah, that, had a crop rich, duster that came in, lit on the highway, and picked us up, took us back to Kingfisher. Yeah. <laughs> I remember on the boulevard, <laughs> brought us back to the airport yeah, at Kingfisher. Bridges on Simran River were washed out there yeah. for There's several days. That flood. There, yeah, south of Dover at 81 Highway, that was the main bridge was washed out there for mm -hmm. quite a while. East, west of Dover was washed out. Well, all that summer to go see my folks, we'd drive to the bridge and then we'd climb down a ladder and somebody'd pick us up on the other side for me yeah. as we called yeah. and kept meet us and go back home the same way because it's a while before they got the roadway up to. Well, I substituted mail carrier out of Dover for 15 years. Mm -hmm. That's the reason how I got that started there. That I always on the Dover route west of, west of Dover there and then the, Mail care that he couldn't, all the bridges were washed out, so he, I, he contacted me. And he'd come south of Dover there and climb up the ladder on the <laughs> river bridge, and then I'd meet him over there. And then I would go out the west, west of Dover route. out there about, well, about, about three miles oh, east boy. of Lowell as far as our route went. And then it went north and around there, and then I'd bring him back to the River bridge there, and he climbed down the river and go on his route. Well, and then, his route. and then they, they needed a substitute mail carrier, so I, I started to substitute mail carrier for him after he after they got the road fixed there, mm -hmm. carry the mail out west of Dover there, and then go back east of Dover, south, northeast of Dover. Did that to him. 73, mm -hmm. I, yeah, think 73 was, I think that's when they, yeah, they was going to consolidate Dover with Lowell and they wasn't going to get home until a really long route. way in the afternoon before we could get home. I was farming about seven or eight quarters in, so. <laughs> you needed mail out. So I <laughs> couldn't carry the mail any longer. I gave that up. Well, how has record keeping changed from your father's time to your time? No, yeah, quite a bit, I guess you'd say. <laughs> Back then, I don't know when they kept much record or much, and, you know, and I don't know what they actually. It was a cash crop type thing. The, of course, he did sell wheat. And I really don't know too much about that, but the eggs at the grocery store, that, that was the main you know place you needed. My dad would bring the eggs in, the guy would write out how many dozen it was. So for 30 days, mom charged groceries, you might say, <laughs> and they owed dad for eggs. So at the end of the month or whenever they could, who owed who, they paid the difference. Yeah. And that, that's the way the groceries were paid for. Uh, like that and when mom moved with us in 83 of course she had these old records they never had more than two hundred dollars in the bank <laughs> you know he just they didn't need money yeah. I suppose if he wanted to buy a new car or tractor he sold wheat they had oh, nice yeah. storage uh, green storages in these barns that are still there and you know kept a lot of wheat in there of course fed wheat yeah, to the chickens but Wheat price coming through that hole. 
a little wheat to town, yeah, sell it. Yeah. Sell it, and that yeah. would be, you know, big money, but it was just amazing to me to look through that, their, her check, uh, bank statements of $200 amount was the highest well, ever I was <laughs> Found the little tickets there, when he was farming and thrashing there, where he bought, what is it, what, 40, 40 or 50 gallons of gas, man, or tractor gas for $4 or something like that. <laughs> it was, not I don't know, seven or eight cents a gallon. <laughs> but, but, hardly but what would it cost today? Oh, oh, oh gosh. Well, of course, it's like the, I don't know, they knock off a little, I guess, for farm fuel a little bit, because I haven't had to buy any either for a long time. But, uh, you know, regular gas is three dollars and yeah, <laughs> four. Three dollars and eighty-one cents here. I see in town here now. So you know, if you had to pay you that for your farm, the farm fuel's a little bit cheaper than that. I don't know what I didn't bought either for quite a while. I had to actually farm gas or anything. Would they would they stash money somewhere in the house? Would they have a secret hiding spot? <laughs> Well, Our folks didn't, to my knowledge, but know. my mother-in-law did. She had, she, they had chickens and sold eggs, and and I guess that was her money. She kept it in the jar, buried in the ground. <laughs> kept it buried. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. when the when the gas pump, the oil oil well come in, do you do you remember when that happened with your folks? That first well came in. Well, we. That Shannon well. Well, we had a well there. At we home. About 19. We were still in Oregon when that went on the head place was first done. Mm -hmm. We had a well there just right out west of the buildings there on that home place there on the Gilmore Farm there. We drilled that in 70, 60. The early 60s when they come oh, in here. They really? drilled a whole bunch of them out in there. They, some company there, they drilled them wells out in there at one time. They had right along that road there where we lived there, they had drilled six wells at one time. It looked like a town at night, almost mm -hmm. in Rigs or went up there, but uh, you know, they didn't pay much for it leases. Leases, leases was well, nothing back out. there, and, uh, and oil was. I forgot what it was on it. I was just curious if that cash flow helped. helped oh, the sure. Bank. Oh, yeah. 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 It always yeah. helps, yeah. but then you don't plan on it because you, tomorrow you may not get anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. you never knew how long it was going to keep those wells. And that well there, our home place, <laughs> there, we had two wells there at one time. Now they took both of them. They're all gone now. They never did pay a lot. For ours. But you kept uh, mineral rights to both? Yeah, both we still sets. got the mineral rights on, on the farms there. But, uh, well, uh, one place there, we got we got one well there on that northwest quarter from our house there. We still got a well there. Mm -hmm. Don't to hardly nothing. Then there's a well out there on this cross farm there. There was two wells there at one time. One of them never did amount to nothing. This this one well we got, they drilled that in I think 1980. Yeah, 1980. And this, it was, was a good well to start out with, really. They named it after one of the investors and nobody knew it was their well, you know, which was nice. Because <laughs> they called it the Shannon well. Yeah. They usually named them after whoever owns the property. They sold that off here a few years ago. It's been kind of a mess since mm -hmm. then. We haven't had much income from it. You just had to learn to farm around it? Well, yeah, well, the ones without the farm there. ground, yeah. Yeah, you just, they just laid off of maybe a half acre or acre. Of course, you had a lease road going in there. They paid little damages when they started those wells here, mm -hmm. you know. They, Paid a little something there, but back then they didn't pay much. I guess they pay pretty good now. With some of these, right. of course, they're drilling some of these slant wells, and those guys are getting big, big money for that. 
royalty. But they had really any right close to Kingfisher here. They've been all the way out in the southwest part of the county. To go out Blaine County. Blaine County. Yeah. Out yeah. In Blaine there. County. Now they've got oh, some yeah. really got wells. some big wells out there. Some of those guys have really got some a lot of money out of those. <laughs> <laughs> right around here they had they had Drew Lane that was slain wells here at all. Uh, I understand they're going to be drilling some, but they haven't yet. Yeah. Yeah. Big slant wells. There's a few so. sleeps up out there in the county. Well, has the way you, you raised and farmed wheat changed that much during the time you started and stopped? Oh, yeah, quite a bit from the back during the mm -hmm. early 50s, yeah. Yeah, it made a lot, a lot of difference. Of course, wheat was. I think when I first started farming there, mm -hmm. maybe a dollar, yeah. 20, 30 cents, something like that. Right. Bush was all it was back there in the early 50s. Then, of course, got up now to eight dollars and something now, eight and a half. Of course, they're. Cost you 10 to put course, it on the ground, though. Of course, their oh, expenses yeah. have got so much higher, too, back there. You know, since then. Your machine is high. Your, yeah, from a small tractor to a combine oh, or what? Oh, we got them combines, 300 and some odd thousand dollars for a combine now, and the tractors are 250,000. <laughs> we want to pay that many then. That's why, I quote, the younger men don't go into farming. Yeah. Unless they can <laughs> inherit the equipment. Yeah, it's cost the way to get track started, you know. You don't care to forget it. <laughs> yeah. Unreal. You're not make you go of it. Try to, young guy can't hardly start out farming on his own. There'd be no way. No, uh, you gotta have the folks up on the house for quite a while to get started, you know. Well, what do you see for the next 100 years for the Gilmore farm? What do you, what do you, what do you plan for it? <laughs> Think that far ahead. Hard, hard to say. I don't know. Hard to say when you're 80 what you're going to do the next 100 years. <laughs> you ask about how things have changed. My dad, and keeping records, dad did a daily journal. Mm -hmm. And he wrote down the weather, and the moisture, if there was any. Uh, he sold eggs or gathered. He could pick every day how many he yeah. was gathered, not just sold. Yeah, I got, got yeah. some books. Well, in you've there. got the book in there yeah. that he did a daily journal of, if, you know, I suppose if a new calf was born or mm -hmm. things like that, he, he had it all yeah. written down. Day a dollar day. value, probably not, mm -hmm. as far as we yeah. do entering on the, enter yeah. on the mm -hmm. computer, but um, it's all there. Mm -hmm. It's very, very interesting to look back through and, and talk about the price of, they raised a little corn, but very little, that wasn't a, yeah, just wasn't probably more for chicken feed or something. Like that. Yeah, it was 99% wheat. Yeah, was. that was it, but all the wheat prices, you know, he has all those listed. It's very interesting to read through that. Can you take your wheat to Kingfisher or to the... Yeah, Kingfisher? yeah. Well, oh, when we lived out there on the Creek or east of Lola Hall, a little bit to Lola, but most of it came to King Yeah. That was my only farm job. Once a year to drive a truck for it when you come by. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Lots of fun. Yeah, official <laughs> truck driver. No air conditioning. <laughs> Strike slow. Straight ship. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, do you hope that the land stays in the family as you? You look towards the next couple of years. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't mean, as long as we're alive, it won't change any. I don't know the, the girls. They may want oh, to sell are... it off eventually. Probably same out in your other profession. Husbands will be a I don't know what they'll do. With that. Well, it's that's already predetermined since that's why they <clears throat> they acquired a third property, so that each of our three sons will have a quarter section. Mm -hmm. Now, what they do with it. Who knows? One of them will keep it because he has a vineyard and a winery on um, just a portion of it. Of course, the land is is uh, rented out, leased out too. But he'll uh, he'll get that farm so he can keep his <laughs> his uh, retirement project yeah. going. Well, the Gilmore's at 160 plus, or is it just just now 160 acres? What we own, you mean? What you own, yeah. Oh, it's an old. It's more. So at least keep the 160 together. 
Oh, yeah. You know, more than likely, that yeah. somebody will keep that going oh, on. Oh, yeah. yeah. We have four and a half quarters. Four quarters but, you know, the original Gilmore is the 160 60, that he yeah. has. Mm -hmm. They have purchased other properties along. Yeah. So, anyway, it would be hard to see. Tell us the girls want to do. <laughs> Maybe their children. Well, the one that bought the tractor may. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they have plans. She, yeah, yeah, she was. She oh, may God, she's a little busy right now. <laughs> she'll be back to farming if they miss it. So now that you're you're living in town, do you miss miss the farm? Oh, I go out there every day. <laughs> dog out so, there. I still have so a dog yes, out there. Yeah, dog so I was out there this morning already for you. When he left the country, he was in town every day. Now yeah, it's reversed. Yeah, it's good good morning. morning. Yeah, he used to, when he lived out there, he used to have to come to town and drink coffee with the boys down there at one of the training elevators. <laughs> now, now it's only about a half mile down there. I can be down there in five minutes now. <laughs> Go down there every morning and meet with the boys. That's it on the farm news. Some of them still have farming interests too, don't they? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, they're most of them. Most of them still farming. You always laugh the city manager used to always come down and drink coffee with him because he said somebody here's gonna to complain to me about what's going on in town. Anything else you wanna add before we close close off? Oh, I don't know, I guess it's pretty well. Pretty well, well I don't know. wouldn't change it. Covered most everything <laughs> as far as the family goes. Yeah, I don't know anything else. Farming was a good life. Yeah, it's been, it's been all right. Yeah. Well, yeah. this brother that's not here, I don't know what age it became apparent, but he was allergic to grass, dust, dirt, whatever. In fact, everything. <laughs> one year, uh, a friend who was a chiropractor had connections in Colorado, so their family and my mother and this brother and myself went to Colorado Springs and stayed, I don't know, two or three weeks to help him get away from Oklahoma dirt and stuff during the summer. So he knew he wasn't going to be a farmer. Yeah. <laughs> so when he got out of the Navy, why, well, he went to Stillwater, <clears throat> got a degree in mechanical engineering, and went to work, work for Lockheed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, was... 25, 30 he years ago. Until he retired from Lockheed and was very involved in some of their secret stealth bomber. Yeah, they, got and they call it yeah. skunk works out there. And they were the highly secret. Yeah. Yeah, he had but, to sign his life away when he retired. He couldn't say nothing. Still can't, he said. Yeah. There's a thing or two that's become, quote, public knowledge, but most of it's still classified. I like the Navy SEAL at Shawnee. Yeah, yeah. Put book out about it in the next month. But anyway, he, that's why he had, you know, uh, no real interest in the farm well, situation here. Yeah. Health-wise, he just couldn't hack it. Well, if there's nothing else, we'll say thank you very much for sharing your stories with us today. It's been great.